you know it's always an honor for me to speak with you because of all the things that you've done over the years, the music that you continue to do, Grammys, Junos, uh, the accolades, um, your story and how you, you know, persevered. And even before you, your parents and everything else, I mean, your family legacy is a walking, talking history lesson. And the fact that I get to interview you to talk about music, like I always keep saying, if you told me the kid that was dancing, and I do believe I was in grade seven to sometimes when we touch, and said that I could have these type of interviews and friendship with you, would never believe it in a million years. Like I always say, thank you so much for My letting honor. me interview you. My honor. We all have uh, fascinating family stories, all of us. We do, but yours just continues. I'm going to jump right into this. Because we're talking about a brand new single. You and another who I can call an icon now because she is deserving that praise. You two got together. Before we say anything else, who am I talking about is the person that you teamed up with? And what is this new single called? Uh, the, song, the single is called Something More. And the singer I'm, I'm uh, blessed enough to be singing it with is a... Uh, None other than the most amazing, iconic guy, Julie Black. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to get to the song in a second, but I'm curious, how did you two get together to do this? Because my thinking was, when one of the last times you and I got together, and with Julie, was during Black History Month, about two years ago, I do believe. Yeah. And we were we were all together because of this uh, on, Zoom, on the Zoom uh, event. Yeah. And I'm wondering, were you two talking then to do this? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, I'll make this quick. I, you you know this, but my, my career has been kind of gone into two halves. The first half of my career was the, the so-called star celebrity banging out my own it, it records, right? And then the second half of my career was like going from an NBA basketball player to an NBA coach, whereby I would write it, it for other artists. So. What started happening maybe about 20 years ago is record companies were always sending their artists to me so I could help them come up with his song. Leroy Sibbett, 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 uh, Billy Newton Davis, you know, who I wrote Can't Live, Can't Live Without You, which was a single with uh, Celine Dion. So I had a history of doing that kind of stuff, Deborah Cox. So uh, Julie was one of those artists that came to me, you know, to have help, to help her write that, you know, all or nothing career defining hit single. And this was. I, I'm almost uh, embarrassed to admit this story. This is about 20 years ago. And she was signed to Warner as a writer. It might have been called Warner Chapel then. And I believe she was signed to Universal as an artist. I'm 99%. I'm, I'm and so she came to my place 20 years ago. We immediately hit it off. You know, I think back then she was only uh, 24. Uh, but she already had this. It's like the Lauren Hill song, That Thing, right? She had that right. thing that went beyond just being a brilliant artist. There's just, I, you know, we just connected it. She felt like sort of like my long last, long lost sister or, or daughter, you know? So we really, really uh, connected on, on so many levels, you know, uh, you know, uh, racially, what it's like to be a person of color, trying to find traction in the music business, you know, artists, everything, parents, family backgrounds. And so, uh, you know, very often I find that as I'm talking with these artists, it's the talking that end, ends up then spilling into the song, right? Yeah. It, it's like this natural kind of uh, synthesis. So we just sat down together at my Yamaha grand piano in my living room, and together we wrote something more. Uh, and it was uh, probably written in uh, about 40 minutes. Very, very fast. I don't know how. That's the way I write usually. It, it comes quickly. The words just start flying out of me, the chords. I have to have my uh, my phone recording every second because I don't remember it. And so, you know, we wrote it together. She was amazing uh, as a writer, as an artist, as a presence. She kind of reminded me of writing with Donna Summer. You, you, sitting beside Donna Summer, writing with her, you know, the late in her Santa Monica home, it was like, how could you not write when you're with an artist like Julie Black or, or Donna Summer? You, you follow me? And yep. so, obviously, the song was about, you know, knowing with all of the the stuff that's going on that is so vexatious and so discouraging always now of course more than never you know we just felt that there's 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 got to be something out there beyond the here and now you know it can be spiritual it doesn't have to be but there's got to be something more so 
we were trying to find, without even realizing it, unconsciously, this message of hope, of, of, uh, of some kind of, of, of a potential for shimmering optimism amidst all the despair. And that's what propelled the song. And then one of the best songwriter producers in the world, Adam Messenger, who has written and produced hits with Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, Usher, et cetera, et cetera, Nasri, um, you know, uh, co-produced this record. So the, the recording was as fun as the writing because to sing with Julie, you know how the, the, the people that used to play alongside uh, uh, the Chicago Bulls, who was that, that great Chicago Bulls basketball player again, Michael Jordan, yes. you know how they said that, that the people that played with them played better because yeah. their game was up by playing alongside Jordan. Well, that's the way it was with Julie and me. I'm talking about me, not Julie. My game was up. It wasn't even a competition, really. It was just like, something happens when you're singing in the presence of, of greatness whereby you're kind of swept up into that vortex so everybody loved the song universal julie warner's every, you know everybody thought it was a hit but then they decided to take julie in this other direction you know which was i i can't explain what it was maybe for lack of a better word more street you know more hip-hop you know not rap exactly and uh so the song kind of fell by the wayside then Julie, as all of us, like you, Rudy, like me, like my brother, we went through all our different art incarnations over 20 years. And then I was playing the Alma Combo uh, maybe six months ago, and Julie was kind enough to host the show and interview me. And during the interview, she brought up that song. I said, you know, we should do something. That's, and that's when it, boom, the red light went off in my head. And then, boom, that's why it's out now. Sorry, Amazing. No. Right. Why don't we, it's funny, because I listened to the whole song. And my first thought was, and it's funny that you said 20 years ago, because I actually felt like it was a song that should have come out in the 80s. And the reason why I say that is because during the 80s, we had a lot of duets like that from all different types of artists. You know, Celine Dion, People Bryson. I mean, I could just go on and on and on with them. Why don't we have those type of duets? And why don't we have songs that talk about the heart? love compassion um future past present we don't have that now other than this this song that you're talking about i can't even think off the top of my head of a duet song like that that's being recorded by anybody and i've even talked about even for films or stage we don't have that anymore yeah you're right it, you know music is is funny uh rudy it, you know it, it, as you know they go, it goes through different sort of phases in, in, uh, in different sort of genres. And 87 was when I banged out Can't We Try as a duet. So I've, I'm very aware of, uh, you know, the power of duets. That was, that was around the time that that was, it was that amazing uh, song. Yeah, in the 80s was Don't Give Up with Peter Gabriel and Kate Bush. You know, uh, absolutely like life-changing duets. And not to mention all the great duets, speaking of Marvin Gaye. Of Marvin Gaye and Tammy Tyrell, you know, written and produced by probably the greatest songwriting team of all time, Ashford and Simpson. Yes. Uh, you know, so you're right. You know, they they, they were they were big in this, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. I wrote a lot with Michael Master, who wrote one of the greatest duets of all time. You know, uh, but uh, things kind of fall in and out of fashion. But you know, in my life, Rudy, I've never really planned or or tried to contrive. Uh, uh, putting out something that is so-called timely, mm -hmm. you know, and all my life when I have had success, not to say that this will be or won't be, it's always been at a time when someone said it's not going to happen. When sometimes when we, when we touch came out, it was the disco phase. Mm -hmm. Everything was disco. So they said, ain't going to happen. Disco, disco. So then Saturday Night Live, Bee Gees were one, two, and I was three was sometimes they were four. And then when wow. Can't We Try came out, it was all uh, alternative, right? It was kind of like not to be racist, but it was kind of like white alternative rock, right? So no way, no way, can't we try, can't be hit, alternative, alternative, alternative. Well, it was a, a smash. And then the same thing happened when I co-wrote I Do Cherish You, which was a hit for 98 Degrees. Everyone was saying, yeah, the boy band thing, that's not happening anymore. So I've always kind of, just by, by flu, kind of gone, uh, gone this own crazy way. And it sort of worked my advantage because if there were nothing but great duets out right now, then it would be harder maybe to find some kind of attraction with this. Uh, then when Sometimes We Touch came out, of course, there's no song out like that. So 
I think in, in my own strange way, that's been one of the reasons I've been so, so blessed for given that I've been putting out records for 50 years now. I'm hoping that this song is going to do something that I have not seen in years. Bring back slow dancing. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember where or when I've been somewhere where couples slow dance. Yes, they did fast dance, but slow dance. I mean, not even at a wedding do you get to see any more slow dance. Like, what, what is going on here? We need more songs like what you and Julie have done. So bringing back slow dancing. I don't even think the young folks today would even know how to approach each other to slow dance or to be able to slow dance. Well, you're right. And of course, with the two years of isolation, you know, the closest we get to a slow dance is, is through, uh, you know, some kind of weird uh, social media. <laughs> but, but, yeah, what a, what a novel concept, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, you know, not to kind of keep bringing back old songs, but you remember that amazing Johnny Rivers record, Slow Dancing, Sway Into the Music? Yes, Slow yeah. Dancing, yeah. Sway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We need those songs. You're right. We need humanity. You know, that's why I love Mary Jane Bly so much. <sighs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What are the chances of you and Julie doing more? What are the chances of you doing a duets album? Um, uh, we're going to do some more duets, and we are doing some co-headliner uh, concerts. We're doing one uh, to be uh, time to be determined at the, uh, I think it's called the Flatow Markham Theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing another one in... Um, there's a theater in Burlington. So Julie and I are going to be doing a bunch of uh, cool headliner shows where we will be performing together. Obviously something more, but more duets. Uh, you know, so that's, you know, Julie is like, I I don't, I can't do the things like Julie and, and Deborah Cox. I mean, they're like brilliant actors. They're dancers. They have their own TV shows. I can't mm -hmm. do nothing. All I can do is write prose and, and do my music, right? Uh, so she's like, I mean, she's she's got Dora. She's she's up for the Canadian's Oscar for for acting. She's done in movies. She's on Digstown this evening, you know. So, you know, I just have to kind of wait for Julie to, you know, uh, uh, drop some of the thousand plates she's spinning, and then we'll we'll get back in the studio and record more. Uh, she recorded uh, the Railway Porter song I wrote with uh, the great Joe Seely. You know, I've been working and writing with and for Julie for twenty years, and. As long as I'm alive, as long as she's willing, I, I, it's my absolute honor to work with her. I love seeing two icons. Yeah. I love seeing two icons and two friends coming together like this, and me being able to witness and hear this. Dan, I'm going to let you go. I want to say thank you again, my friend. This thank has you. been always an amazing experience. Thank you for bringing back the old school slow song music. I know some people are going to say you know, that you know, Tony Bennett's done these duets and things like that. No, I'm not talking about those as much as I love Tony Bennett. I'm talking about this where, like, for example, an album had these fast songs, but then they had that slow signature song that you dance to, that you could whisper in her ear those lyrics so she knows how you feel if you didn't know how to say it. To me, songs like what you and Julie have done brings back that era and that's what i'm happy so much to see yeah the last thing i'll say it's just you you remember because you were riffing on that at the beginning of our, our discussion here but one of my greatest memories of all time would be because i was probably like you really i was very very shy girls were not interested in me i was one of the nerds right <laughs> but they were they were interested in guys that like to read and, and and write you know they like the bad boys and the jocks so when you were in the in the high school kind of uh gym where there was a dance and that slow dance song came out in my generation would say let it be or uh or uh their way to heaven right there would be this sort of collective sigh you would just hear this audible <laughs> sigh throughout all the kids who were like me who were say 15 and that would be the only chance that i would have to have any kind of physical contact with, with a female so yeah i mean you know, we live for those moments. That they they do. They were the high points of our of our lives. I agree oh, with you. Never forget it, my friend. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much for the great music, and thank you for continuing to give us great music. Thank you again, sir. Great to see you again. My best of luck to you and your family.